From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Earlier in the investigation, Megan Stedman was thought to have been killed in Idaho Falls. I'm Kristen Merkel and I'll share new details about how she may have been killed right here in Bozeman. I'm Edgar Cidio at the edge of downtown. I'm standing at the intersection of 5th and Main where there's new construction activity and proposed construction that could expand the economic horizons of downtown. And Montana's Sean O'Malley will step into the octagon once again next week, but we may be seeing more of him at some Montana staples across the state. Alrighty, it is 6 31. Just take a look at that sunrise <laughs> over the mountains right there. It's yep. absolutely gorgeous. It on this is Tuesday. pretty. Uh, we are seeing some snow in Butte. Uh, yeah. Sunrise is pretty in Bozeman. We do expect to see some snow at times today, though. Yeah, get ready. Yep, uh, definitely seeing that in the mining city. Let's start out with temperatures. Right now, we're holding into the teens for most of the area. 20 out toward Ennis. We're going to see spotty, sporadic snow uh, throughout the day. The heaviest into some of the mountain ranges especially as you get into the mid to late afternoon, we start seeing that snow really developing um, across the area. It is gorgeous this mm. morning um, in the Bozeman area, talking about temperatures into the 20s, remaining chilly. We do have snow into the afternoon. It's equally pretty uh, to look at in Butte. We just have not as much fun driving in it, yeah. but there is a little bit of snow in the forecast. We'll talk more about the timing and expectations in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Now, it's been nearly two months since Megan Stedman was found dead in Idaho Falls, Idaho. The Spokane woman had been missing for about a month, last seen in Livingston. And new details in the case reveal Stedman was actually killed in Bozeman. MTN's Christian Merkel explains. Originally arrested and charged in Idaho, now after further investigation, Christopher Foyles is accused of killing his girlfriend Megan Stedman in this Walmart parking lot in Bozeman. 46. Chris Brandon Foyles. Christopher Foyles was arrested in Idaho on January 12th. Idaho Falls police found Stedman's body in the back of a camper the couple owned together. At the time, Foyles told police he stabbed Stedman to death in the RV. Foyles has been charged with killing Stedman in Idaho. Now he's charged with deliberate homicide in Gallatin County. 34-year-old Stedman was reported missing by Bozeman police in December, last seen in Livingston. According to the new court documents filed last Friday, Stedman and Foyles were seen on Walmart surveillance videos leaving the Bozeman store on December 15th. Once she entered the RV, Stedman was never seen alive again. Foyles was later seen purchasing items from the Bozeman Walmart, including cleaning supplies, a hacksaw, and 55-gallon contractor bags. Foyles later admitted to then taking the SIM card out of Stedman's phone and burying the phone in a Bozeman park. He also admits to killing Stedman's dog, Callie. On December 19th, Foyles was seen in Island Park, Idaho, and Stedman was not with him. As of Monday, Foyles remains in the Bonneville County Detention Center. Law enforcement in Montana and Idaho are working to extradite him to Montana on a $1 million warrant. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. And it's no exaggeration to say downtown Bozeman is seeing a lot of change. And as our Edgar Cedillo shows us, new growth is now popping up in a spot many may not think much about. Officials say it'll be a boost for the local economy. If you've been downtown recently, then you probably have noticed a lot more construction activity, specifically here at the intersection of 5th and Main. Right next to me, there's a proposal for a new hotel where an old hotel used to stand. And then right behind me, there's also new construction activity on some apartments, which city officials say could push the economic boundary of downtown further west. In a lot of ways, these projects are extending what's already going on downtown, trying to have uh, walkable urbanism, something that's interesting for pedestrians as they walk by. The intersection already has one project already under construction and a proposal for another that would add hotel beds. Coming forward with a, a new concept for a five-story hotel on this site. And then of course behind us we have uh, the fifth and main residences, which is a six-story apartment building. The site where this proposed hotel sits has been vacant for seven years. It's been a while uh, since the city center, um, the Black Angus restaurant, 
uh, were torn down, uh, left kind of a, what I call a vacant hole in downtown. Daryl Schlem, CEO of the Bozeman Chamber of Commerce, says that the proposed hotel would add some much needed supply. He says right now the city has just under 3,000 rooms, but in five years could be more than 5,000 rooms. But if you even look at the connectivity now, where we're missing, if you go from 7th, 19th is revitalized back full, 7th Avenue is becoming that, you're going to see a lot longer, in my opinion, walking Main Street. Schleim says while the change might be scary for locals, the growth has brought a nearly billion dollar boost to the economy. Along with all the amenities that we have, we're sharing that with about 4.2 million people that come through. What we have to remember is they left almost $1 billion last year in the Gallatin County economy. The hotel proposal still needs administrative approval before it can move forward, and the more than 120 apartments across the street could come online sometime in 2025. In Bozeman, Edgar Cedillo, MTN News. And at Monday night's Bozeman School Board meeting, the Board of Trustees approved the May 7th high school ballot language. At the February 12th meeting, the trustees called for a high school general fund levy election to be held on May 7th. The school district is looking for authorization to impose an increase in overbase local taxes to support the general fund in the amount of $430,000. This increase is money, in money is to help properly maintain and operate programs in the district. Passage of this proposal will increase the annual taxes on a home with an assessed market value of $100,000 by approximately $1.34. A home with an assessed market value of $300,000 by approximately $4.02 and a home with an assessed market value of $600,000 by approximately $4 and $8 and 4 cents. Now, invasive species are something Montanans keep in mind when going in the water or on the land. MTN's Anissa Comer has a look at what the state is doing to protect those ecosystems. From noxious weeds to aquatic pests, invasive species pose a threat to our agriculture and wildlife. It's National Invasive Species Awareness Week, and we spoke with Josh Wagoner from the Montana Department of Agriculture for ways that you can do your part to stay vigilant. We work with plants generally from um, Eurasia, about the same latitude as Montana, same type of climate. So they get brought here, and there's no natural checks and balances from in the environment. So um, they really go out of control. So educate yourself. And then when you're hiking, fishing, hunting, keep your equipment yourself, your dog, everything clean. Um, watch for seeds. These are here and we all have a part in doing something to prevent their movement. Never dump aquarium pets into waterways because in fact, goldfish can survive in our waters and become a huge problem. They'll just keep growing bigger and bigger and actually outcompete our native fish. The Montana Invasive Species Council also encourages awareness of potential threats, such as feral swine that may migrate from Canada and spread diseases to our pets and livestock. Next week, Montana State University Extension is hosting the feral swine tour to spread word on preventative measures that can be taken. We spoke with Montana Invasive Species Council Administrator Liz Lodeman for more information on the Squeal on Pigs campaign. So next week, there will be a series of meetings starting in Haver and ending up in Sydney. Folks will be able to learn from Department of Livestock and Wildlife Services folks about why feral swine are bad, what to look for. You know, if you suspect you see signs of feral swine, their tracks or their scat. For more information on the feral swine tour and what you can do to help keep other invasive species out of Montana, visit our website. I'm Anissa Coomer, MTN News. Now, Montana's Sean O'Malley will be stepping into the octagon once again next week. And our MTN's Tom Wiley shows us that you'll be seeing more of O'Malley with some Treasure State staples. Sugar Sean O'Malley is already the most high profile athlete coming out of Montana today. But ahead of his fight next week at UFC 299 in Miami, you're about to see a whole lot more of Sugar Sean in the Treasure State. I guess you asked me how have things changed with the O'Malley since Sean became the world champion. Um, to me, it seems like I've gotten a lot more attention and Sean and I really want to put Montana in the spotlight with Sean. Sean recently signed a deal with Rise Fuel Energy Drink, and starting this month, you'll see his signature cotton candy flavor in town pump stores across Montana. Helena, Montana. Um, yeah, from Helena, I started training when I was about 16. 
Fortunately, town pumps have agreed, all 107 stores, I believe, agreed to get the Rise Fuel drink in, energy drink in, and it's the cotton candy flavor. Makes sense, goes with Sean's pink hair. Six foot cardboard cutouts of Sean. They're gonna display them in all their bigger stores. And the O'Malley's also worked with Universal Athletic to get some Montana signature shirts in stores across the state. This is gonna be my favorite design. Um, Sean wanted to bring Montana back, and so we designed the Montana flag with Sean standing in front of it. Uh, seems to me like it's the most popular one for adults. You know, I can envision a lot of families in Montana, and there is a lot to support Sean that would like to wear one of those shirts during his fight. So, But aside from the merchandise, Sean is also supporting Montana causes, including one that's very near and dear to his heart. He's sponsoring um, quite a bit of money to the torch run, law enforcement torch run, Special Olympics. And we know that Sean's his love and passion is Special Olympics, wanting to big, give back to Montana as much as he can. Not bad for a skinny kid from Helena, Montana. No, and Sean really appreciates all the Montana support. Um, it's cool to see Sean giving back to Montana. There for a while he was so busy with his career that I think he, that kind of took a back seat, but not anymore. Anytime I call Sean with anything Montana, he's ready to do it and willing to do it. So Tom Wiley, MTN Sports. Thank you very much, Tom. 641 now. We're going to take a short break here on Montana this morning, but when we come back, we have all your top stories. A look at that forecast. Plus, we're going to head to the ice rink for this next story. Breaking down barriers. I'm Michelle Miller with two of the students who brought figure skating for the first time to an historically black college.